Accession number double three nine oh four real one. The the Britannic fitted out brand new as a hospital ship had left Southampton with Violet Jessup on board, going out to the Mediterranean. Well you see, I was down nursing. Yes. Actually, you don't believe it. <laughs> we just had a brief interruption on this tape while Miss Jessup showed me a photograph of herself as a striking, dark-haired, dark-eyed Irish lass in a, in a nurse's uniform about to join the Botanic. So she had hoped when the ship went out to the Mediterranean as a hospital ship that she would be able to meet her brother who had been in Salonica mm -hmm. for two years and unfortunately he went to Malta and the Botanic had too deep a draft to get into Malta. Mm -hmm. So she went to Murdoch and was on her way there. Yes, she was supposed to get there this afternoon, that afternoon. And thankfully there were no wounded men on board the ship. It was it just had the crew and the and the medical staff on board. And one of the nursing sisters had been ill and was downstairs in the cabin. Jessup had gone down to spoil her, as I'm sure she did most of the people mm -hmm. whom she took care of and trying to get her to eat some lunch, just as she'd been trying to get me to eat lunch for the last two hours. <laughs> anyway, tell us what happened then, if you would. Well, um, the thing was, she had been struck. Mm -hmm. I didn't mention that, did I? You said there was a noise, and you felt that yeah. the torpedo... Yeah, well, I was, up, I was upstairs in the pantry getting this nurse her breakfast mm -hmm. and all the staff, medical staff dozens of doctors you see right. and nurses, they were all in the saloon at breakfast right. when suddenly crash right. well no sooner did the crash happen that everybody stood up from the table and disappeared and it was so different to the Titanic where there didn't seem to be any panicky movement, you know. Mm. No. Everything happened as though normally. I'm yes, saying, yes. Right. But of course this was wartime. Exactly, yes. yes. And um, so all I did was then, uh, I was still intent taking this nurse on back, <laughs> <laughs> was to collect my pat about her right. and my piece of toast and a roll and make a pot of tea as quickly as because the pantry was empty by there and I was just left alone uh, and go down to her and by that time you see two two sisters uh, occupied each uh, each cabin had two right. well her, the, the sick one was still in bed looking very white and frightened and the other one was getting her things and I, I said it, it's all right I'll look after sister so and so and I said no, you must get up and I'll dress you and uh, I could see she was trembling, she wouldn't be any good at all. So I decided to let her keep her pyjamas on, you see. Mm. And I said, I'm going to put your uniform over your pyjamas, because you may have to climb down a ladder, mm -hmm. and it would be better for you. And uh, it took me so long, and I made her take some of this tea and a bit of roll and that, yeah. while I was dressing her. And... Um, Finally, I said to this other, don't worry, I'll take her up the stairs when I've got her dressed. And when I took her up the stairs, the young officer, who was at the sort of door, you know, he, he nearly went white because he said, all the nurses are gone. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, I've had to dress this nurse, and she was quite useless, she couldn't do a thing. So um, he said, well, I'll take her along because they, uh, they're all, uh, more or less, the boat's ready to be lowered. And um, he said, "What about you?" So I said, "Oh, I've got all sailors have their own have a boat, you see, right. a corner of the boat of trade." Right. Right. So I said, "I'm number four. I'll go along to my boat. I've got to go back to my cabin yet." So um, I went along and collected my engagement thing and my clock and, and different things, you know, mm. and um, went up. Excuse me, may I interrupt? At this time, was the boat? listing at all? No. Was the ship listing or was there was no uh, evidence that she was sinking? No. Mm. Oh well, um, there was a little because when you looked out forward, forward mm. you could see she was a little bit down. Down at the head. But, um, mm. but um, no, um, 
he said she was such a big ship too yeah. you see yeah. um they don't uh, it's extraordinary but neither of the ships that i've been sinking on <laughs> Yeah. Have, uh, and very few people can say that, by the way. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Specialising in thinking. Yeah. Uh, have ever behaved badly, you yeah. know, before been, you know, yeah. gone down as ladies. So you went, came up from your cabin with your rosary and your yes, other, all other my bits belongings. And, all my bits and pieces. Right. And, uh, um, you know, the thing was that I was so keen on not using any sense at all, putting a couple of rolls in one pocket. Mm -hmm. And my prayer book in the next, mm -hmm. and then turning my apron up so that nothing would drop out of my pockets, mm -hmm. going up, find a number four boat, and it was just about to be lowered, and there was a poor little frightened bellboy there that I tried to cheer up and tell him it was all right, it always ended all right sort of thing, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were. Uh, you know, it's awful on these new boats because um, um, <laughs> if ever you're on a boat that has to be lowered, it's awful because when they're lowering boats, it's, uh, the, uh, the ropes are all new. Oh, terrible, the because the one end of the boat will go down and the other end will yeah. <laughs> out, you know. We left the little bell by our halfway up the ship, you see. He got so panicky that he took the wrong rope and it was a rope that was hanging over the side and the uh, he stayed on the side? No, we got him to drop and we insisted that let's go and fall into the boat, we'll catch a sort of thing. But um we got down and next to me was standing a doctor. Mm -hmm. This is the pretend. Yeah. And uh, he was a very quiet uh, chap, but I happened to have my back to the ship you know, looking at her, and uh, it was very proud of And as we touched water, everybody jumped out. Out of the boat? Out of the boat, making a wonderful dive, just uh, like you see fish, you yeah. know, the kind right. And standing the next I said, why are you doing that? You know, I still had my back to the boat. Mm -hmm. And uh, he didn't answer. And I looked at him and I thought, well, what's the matter with you, sort of thing? I think I had my senses, you know. Mm -hmm. And I came in to look at the baby, and of course, she was still going on, and we had three propellers, and they were cutting everybody to pieces. You see? I see. She was already tipping up. The propellers were out of the water. No, no. She was on an even keel. Right. She wasn't even... I see. She was, that's the thing, she wasn't even... Um, the largest ship in the world at that time. And let us hear now what happened. Well, I, uh, well, I was left alone, you see, and I decided um, which would it be better to be, cut the pieces or drown? I mean, I had to make the decision. Mm -hmm. If I stayed in the boat, she was being drawn, you see, then. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful how, even at a distance, that uh, those three propellers could draw, right. and I could feel her going over, and I thought, well now, Which is it? drowning is, is not as bad as being cut off. <laughs> 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 and doing it cold-bloodedly, too. So you went over the side? I went over the side. Did you have a life jacket on? <laughs> I did something, John, that I always, if your mother, well, I don't suppose I took up a boat drill, but I was always very, very strict, you know. Strict with your passengers. Oh, terribly. Yeah. And uh, now, don't put on a life belt unless you know that you mustn't put it on over clothes. Mm -hmm. I mean, jackets and that. Right. Put it on as near to your body as right. possible. Right. And uh, they used to say, you're awfully strict on boat <laughs> no, drill. You, you had good reason to be. Well, anyway, um... On this uh, trip, I was hoping to see my brother, and for that reason, I was, took all my best clothes. Mm -hmm. you, although it was only your brother, you always like to be very smart. And, sure. and um, I had this lovely coat. Well, instead of putting the coat over the life belt, I put the life belt over the coat. A thing I never allowed a pass. I'd have killed a passenger if they did that. Mm -hmm. And so, when I went into the water, I went down miles with the weight of, you know, clothes, 
and came up under the boat. And, to begin with, I got a terrible blow on the head, which you may think is the reason for me behaving as I am today, and if they give me some food, <laughs> talk too much. But, um, um, I got a terrific bang on the head. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it did occur to me, if I get another like that, I'll be finished. Mm -hmm. You know, not panic, it is a thought. Registered in your mind. Yeah. Right. You keep... Yeah. I won't let go, so I let go. I met that man after. He was telling the story. <laughs> he panicked because he could feel this strong hand. Yeah. And then I opened my hand and let go. Yeah. And he was a little red-haired, um, um, what do you call it, um, orderly. Yeah. Uh, in the orderly corps. Medical orderly. Medical yeah. orderly, I see. And uh, he told, he was telling his mate when I heard him say, and he said, a strong grip and he said then suddenly let go and I said that was me and he looked at me <laughs> of course he'd heard I'd been you know the water and I thought of myself what a grand thing that I let go because he's a lovely little chap yeah. but what a terrible thing you know I'd been killed and <laughs> dragged him dragged him with you but you came up all right after you let yes, go yes I came up arm. all right um, and you know sort of floated but the only thing, of course, that nearly absolutely killed me was the first thing that was quite near me when I turned round was an open human head. Yeah. Just... Um, Somebody hit the propeller, probably. Yes. Yeah. I mean, and it, the thing that, of course, it would um, come to your mind, it reminded me when my father used to kill a sheep, you know, mm -hmm. and the, yeah. a sheep's head. Yeah. I never yeah. saw anything so dreadful. Yeah. And... You could tell from the collar that he was a young and lovely person, you know, yeah, yeah. A, a young, uh, it was a soldier, whatever, right. you know, Red Cross man. Mm -hmm. But um, I floated about, I carried four life belts floating around, because <laughs> I don't swim, you see, I've I never learned to yeah. swim, and so... Um, you swallowed a lot of water. Oh, talk about... I. For, for years after, so I could feel that cork. Yeah. You know, your mouth full of cork, and yeah. you know, if you're wretched, you brought up a cork. Right. And um, this was the cork insulation from the ship. Yes, from the ship, and you see the oil too. Yeah. yeah. But um, presently, I heard a noise, and uh, a young man, who was partly submerged, called out, and he he must have seen it. I didn't see it saw the life uh, one of our launches come towards him mm -hmm. and uh, he called out there's a woman in the water and then I looked over to see him and he, poor thing um, our uh, on board medical the, not the ship's company but the um, head mm -hmm. he was a man who was very much disliked the head of this officer mm -hmm. and he was standing up in the boat and he called, this young fellow called out, and uh, he asked to be picked up. He said, wait your turn. And I think I hated, I hated that man from that moment. <laughs> I, well, I need to say, fancy anybody. Yeah. And he said, I've lost my arm, sir. Well, he said, wait your turn. And he was standing up in, in his yeah. regimentals and quite all right. If I had a gun, I would have shot him. Yeah. Terrible. I believe it. And this poor chap went down. He, he, he didn't survive. No, he went there because he was... I mean, he'd lost one arm. Yeah. And I, I suppose it's very difficult to try and swim with one arm, especially Lots if you've not been... Shark and lost the blood as well. Yes, yeah. terrible. And... Um, and and, uh, and then I, I never forgot that poor human head that was, yeah. uh, you know... Mm -hmm. And you could tell by his neck, young, very mm -hmm. young, and his mm -hmm. fair hair and that, mm -hmm. and... Uh, Mm. The whole thing was was too awful, yeah. and uh, but afterwards, I it went all around the ship. This two of the sailors said they'd never seen anybody in the water, practically you know near death, smiling. Well, I said, wouldn't you smile if somebody came to pick you out of the water after you'd been in that yeah. melange, yeah, you know? Exactly. Sure, I'd have smiled too. It must have been. 
at that, if you didn't realize it at the time, shortly thereafter, to think that you would survive thinking of the sinking of two great ships like that. Yes, it did. It's been quite a, uh, a feeling of, of uh, a special salvation that you must have experienced, that you had somehow been spared. Well, we've been a little bit, that. John, I don't know how you feel about, um, you know, religion. Now, it's always been a little bit of, um, of what should I say, um, the right word. Uh, oh, I can't find it. I know it's on the tip of my tongue, but... Um, you mean that you felt somehow special? A certain responsibility mm -hmm. for uh, a certain thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, something very difficult turned up to do and said, oh, that's not my affair. That mm -hmm. Well, how do you know it's not your affair? Perhaps it's God's wish or something. You know, yeah. you've been in such a thing. And you sort of you feel you're drawn and you can't say no because... Right. Um, all sorts of queer things have happened and you feel, uh, well, it's nothing to do with me. Well, how do you know it's nothing to do with you? Perhaps it is, you know, yeah. something, and it's, it's quite it's clear. Uh, I think what's important, too, and I, I, this is my theory and one of the things I propose to discuss in the book, that, particularly on the Titanic, that those who had a job to do, mm -hmm. like your two the two pantry boys oh, with, yes, with yes. a sack full of sovereigns. Yes. Or Andrews and the deck steward, for instance, yes. I don't know. They were throwing over bundles of deck chairs yes, yes. Uh, over the side. Or the man, the gym instructor within the gym uh, showing people how to work the bicycles, even yes. as the ship was sinking. Yes. Or the orchestra that was playing. All those people who had jobs to do and somehow felt more comforted doing something. Mm. Uh, in both cases, you as a stewardess, in the first case on the Titanic, you comforted a woman passenger who was afraid to get mm. into the lifeboat. You put yes, arm, yes. your arm around her. It made such a difference. You know, she she brightened up at once. She sort of put herself into my care. Well, because that was your job, taking care of passengers. I suppose it was, yes. Yeah. And then you took care of the baby. Mm. And then you took care of the, the mess boy on the, on the Britannic. Yes, yes. Uh, again, you felt at the time that what made you uh, feel, I'm sure, mm. more, uh, less afraid was well, that you got on with the job. It was um, that because I had the same experience uh, when I was down nursing with that photograph taken because uh, but just before the Britannic, I was down nursing in Broadstairs mm. where uh, Prime Minister lives and um, it was a lovely little hospital, but uh, we were very short-staffed, and there was one boy there. Um, he was in a, uh, he had about 18 wounds in his arm. Mm -hmm. His arm should have come off, but they tried to save it. Yeah. And he suffered terribly, and you know, 18 tubes had to go into his arm twice a day. To drain it. To drain it. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, I knew he, matron detailed me to look after him. Well, I had to look after him day and night. Mm. He had to be dressed at night, which meant that I had to, because he was bad then and they were afraid to lose that arm. I had to get up uh, every two hours. Well, when you're young and tired, it's an awful job. Yes. And you know that boy, although it must have been agony. Yes. Um, he scarcely ever made a motion because he, he does. Let nobody with nurse Jess that I can't stand the pain. Yeah. Uh, you know, he must have felt just the same yeah. pain with me as anybody else. Sure. Yeah. You see, but he didn't say a word, but his face used to go completely white. Mm. And of course, I used to feel it. Mm. Mm. I think those experiences, you know, give you a sort of... They do help you. They give you strength. Yes, because when somebody else puts their confidence, you don't feel that you, you dared and fail them. That's right. I think this was very much the case. On and he was a, he's a young teacher, and uh, you could tell he loved his job, and he was always mm. afraid he'd lose his arm, and mm. the surgeon who was looking after him said, you know, that, that arm may have to come off. And, you know, we were working, trying to sort of do everything to stay, save the arm, mm. you know. Because mm. in the First World War, it wasn't, uh, you know, I mean... They weren't didn't have as many tools. No, or and we were very short. Yeah. I mean to say, um, 
we were short of nurses, we were short uh, uh, many a time. I had to get up in the night to, to do him because um, nobody in the, the people we had would be able to do that dressing. Mm. I mean, it was really a professional nurse's job, yeah. and not a, a, a not one of the you know the ads. Well, but the the, uh, the thing was that he liked and trusted you and felt yes. felt that you yes. were, were the one. Of course, it used to be. worry me because I used to feel terrible because I used to see his face going whiter and whiter, mm. and I knew the pain. Yeah. And of course, I'd suffered greatly to pain myself in my life, but I didn't want him to think that the, you know. Uh, I want to ask you one more question and then we'll have some lunch. Uh, last week when I spoke to Edith Russell, she said that after she had been on the Titanic, she used to go on other ships, that people knew who she was or knew she had been a Titanic survivor. Well, she could, she jolly well see to it too, did she? Well, not only that, but did you find in, when you were on the Majestic, for instance, or any of the later ships you were on, that people said, no. Here comes, here comes Jessup. Never once has anybody come to me. Isn't it funny that you can keep such a lot of secrets to yourself? Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I don't think this. Well, I don't, nobody's mentioned that, but mm -hmm. nobody in this village even, I think, that knows. You see, knows about you. Like no. Um, but surely your fellow stewards uh, in the twenties and thirties, when you were on ship. Yes, when I went to South America, you know, because I, I went and rejoined the Royal Mail. Yes. Did I tell you that? Yes, you told me about that. Uh, because I just wanted to see my own hometown mm. again. Mm. And um, they never mentioned it. Mm. Has, have you found being a survivor of the Titanic, has it in, in any way uh, given you any kind of different life than no. you thought you might have had otherwise. No. It was, to no. your mind then, as you said earlier, just another incident in a life yes, of was, 42 years. As far two. as that's concerned, nobody has ever mentioned uh, that I've been at sea or been on the Titanic or anything. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I think that um, a lot depends on the person themselves. I think that's very true. You know, mm -hmm. I've met a lot of people and I've made a lot of friends that even didn't know I'd been at sea. Yeah. Sometimes it would come out if I said that um, of all the countries I liked best, Japan was the one. Mm. And the country I didn't care for much who depressed me was India. Mm. You mm. see, and I think it's just the atmosphere in, in a country. Right. right. Well, I think this has been a most uh, interesting and certainly in terms of my book, uh, absolutely invaluable discussion with you, and I certainly you appreciate so? your time. Yes, because I I I didn't know any of these things that you told me about the Britannic, and I think also as a general kind of uh, portrait of a stewardess in those days, it's been a pretty good interview. Well, you know, the the Britannic uh, was. Um it's, it, it's a tremendous thing for me. It also, um, what shall I say? I don't know whether I ought to tell you this, but a, a great um, example of what human nature can be and, what, um, and how it can fail you. Now, you'd be surprised. Um, I mean, the reason I was in that position on the Britannic was because I'd stayed behind to look after a passenger, you right, see. Right. Well, I didn't want anyone to sort of say, well, because it was my duty. That was your job. It was my job. You um, would no more have not gone down to that passenger. Oh, pass it. And you. another thing, you have a job, you've got to do it, and I always believe in finishing my job. Right. Well, um, she was of the nursing staff. Mm -hmm. Now, we had an old matron on board, and uh, of course, I belong to the ship's company. She may have looked down her nose at that, I don't mm. know. But um, when, uh, when I was taken, I, we were first of all dragged out of the water, mm. then uh, taken by boat to uh, a little island where mm. the native woman was most kind. Right. And 
took my clothes and hung them outside and I had to go out after some fish my quarters from behind the, the purse's back to <laughs> stand and talk to someone and uh, she was trying to dry them you see in the sun yeah. one of the Aegean islands mm. little tiny island and they were so kind yeah. she put me to bed and put a warm blanket over me while she tried to dry my clothes mm. and then we were taken uh, by um, launch to the flagship the flagship was the Dunson and the Duncan and she was a beautiful you know thing mm. and uh, then we were taken ashore to in the Piraeus to the hotel well by this time I was wanting to bring up the uh, cork I had mm. inside mm. of me and the salt water yeah and um, I was given a room uh, went to bed and I got up and I must tell you this the joke about the family after the Titanic, I used to, you know, moan that on the Carpathia, the big the south, mm -hmm. I couldn't buy a toothbrush. Right. And I couldn't live without cleaning my teeth, you see. Yeah. And the boys got a little bit, you know, what brothers are. Yeah. You know, now, Vi, the next time you go on a boat, for God's sake, if it's going to sink, put your toothbrush in your pocket. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> no, don't laugh, Joe. When I... <laughs> When I went to my cabin after getting this meal, I was shown a room. No food, uh, nothing mm -hmm. to drink, not even a cup of hot water. Oh. And I was full of sea water, sea water and, and uh, powdered cork, mm. which they love to put in ships. Yeah. And um, I got up and I thought, well, I must get some of this uh, cork from around my teeth. And I was standing cleaning my teeth. Still very empty, you see. I haven't yeah. had any the day yeah. before because in those days, I told you communion, you couldn't. Yeah. And there was a knock at the door, and the sister matron opened it. She didn't say, "Oh, Miss Jessup, I'm so glad to see you're alive. Have you had anything?" She said, "Where did you get that?" <sighs> well, I was afraid of being sick because I still yeah. felt. Yeah, felt ill. Yes, you see, mm -hmm. there was still salt water. Mm -hmm. And I took a breath and I said, I brought it with me, quietly, you know, for fear of... Mm. Yeah. And you know, she shut the door with a bang and went off. She never asked me. And Matron never sent for me, never came near me. She was an old uh, war, war, war yeah. woman. She was yeah. much too old to be there. Yeah. But could you believe that sort of thing? Never saying, How are you th have you had anything? Or are you all right? Or, and the next yeah. thing... Uh, about two hours' time, a cup of terrible stuff came up. I don't know what it tasted like. And a bit of um, bread with some terrible goat's milk butter on it. Mm -hmm. You know. Rancid oh, flour. Oh, shocking stuff. stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but, but I thought to myself, just imagine, I wonder if they'd been in the water and saw <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> I never forgot that. Where did you get that? Too Where did you get that? And I said I brought her with me, which was the truth, but I was afraid of elaborating and saying yeah, that uh, yeah. what a good thing it was I brought it with me. You brought it with you because you hadn't had one on the Titanic yes, and you yes. couldn't buy one on the car And yet. my brothers, brothers always, always ragged yeah, you. Oh, they ragged me. <laughs> For goodness <laughs> sake, next time, the first thing you put in your pocket is your toothbrush. <laughs> yeah. Well, on that amusing anecdote, we'll end the interview and have some lunch. Thank you very much.